Hey guys, Brad coming at you again. Because I got two little things in the mail. And we'll talk a little bit of things that happened in week one of the NFL. So first off, my two pickups. Minor, but stuff you definitely don't see all the time. So not big money, but uh, like I said, just stuff you don't come across. And there are two Dolphins wide receivers that, again, will never make the Hall of Fame, won't be in the Ring of Honor, but were dependable, good wide receivers for multiple years. So the first one up from 1999 SPX, we've got an OJ McDuffie, and this is the Radiance version. Look how shiny it is. You don't come across these cards very often. This is numbered 60 of 100. So, like I said, one you don't come across very often. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is the Radiance version. There's a Spectrum version as well. I don't remember what that's numbered to. But, but pretty card kind of gives that prismatic effect. Look at that. O.J. McDuffie. Best out of him. Once led the league in catches one year with 90. Shows you what a different time it was, right? So, lovely McDuffie. Then I came across this guy, which this one confuses me a little bit, so i got to do some more research. But it's from 2009 National Treasures. It's a rookie of Brian Hartline, now wide receiver coach for the Buckeyes the last few years, and you saw what he's been churning out there. Like I said, I look for him to be, wouldn't surprise me if he's either in charge of a college team here pretty soon or has an NFL job here in the short future. But Brian Hartline, and the reason I'm confused is this card's numbered 5 out of 10, which should be gold, if I recall correctly. Should be gold. However, this is definitely a silver card. Silvers are usually to 25 in this set. So I've got to look to see if rookies, and if anyone knows, are rookies silvers to 10 and the regular base is to 25? Because this is definitely silver, as you can see here. Yeah, it shows up. This is what it looks like in person. So it's definitely silver, but based on the numbering, it should be gold. So I have to look into that. Maybe the rookies are different. But either way, numbered 5 of 10 of a rookie from 09 National Treasures, I think that's pretty good find. And all these cards were under $10. So, you know, again, after the Merino, right, you got you to gotta throw in some bargains, right? But that's the kind of stuff I love to find. Like, like I said, guys are, aren't Hall of Famers, but guys you grew up watching and were very dependable for your teams. And both of those would fit the bill. So happy to add those two to the collection. Now to week one. How often over the years have I had to come to apologize for anyone who watched a Dolphins game? Be like, sorry, you had to put yourself through that, right? Well, in week one, I think it's by miles, far and away, we had the funnest game to watch in week one, right? If you were not entertained... Well, it's probably because you really love defense, and there wasn't a lot of it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the Dolphins win 36-34 in a thriller where they never took a snap with the lead. Think that in your head, because we took it right before the half, and then the Chargers came out of the second half, and then we scored at the end, and the Chargers ended the ball, you know. So, like, outside of the kneel down at the end of the game, which I'm not counting, we didn't take a snap with the lead. <laughs> so I found that a very interesting stat. But uh, Tua was actually not perfect. You'll look at his stats and a lot of his highlights, which he was threw awesomely. But he, he had a fumbled snap inside the 10, and we lost the ball. I think that was the first drive of the game. 
Then he threw a bad pick in the end zone. So we could have scored upper 40s very easily in that game. But uh, the offense was rolling. We still didn't run the ball enough for me. Again, I get he didn't have time to be patient with it because on the other side of the ball, the Chargers were busy rushing for 234 yards. Not something I expected. Uh, I thought the addition of David Long would help. He was non-existent. I think he actually got benched at one point. Christian Wilkins, Zach Steeler, Raekwon Davis up front got pushed around 90% of the game. The Chargers offensive line took it to us. But we didn't blitz hardly all game until the last possession, and obviously Herbert must have been fooled by it because we had an intentional grounding and two sacks on four plays in the last drive. So he blitzed seven times the entire game, which if you watch the Dolphins under the Flores era, we led the league in blitzes. This looks like this year will be towards the bottom of it, but they were timely. So I'm interested to see the Dolphins. I can't believe we're going to be that bad against the run every week, but maybe. Like I said, we may need to just see if we can find a nice run stuffing linebacker. I don't know. But uh, but like I said, even the front line was getting pushed around, which doesn't normally happen with Sealer and Wilkins. So we'll see if that was a week one anomaly. Maybe the Chargers offensive line is just that dominant. We'll find out in weeks to come. But very fun game to watch. Tyreek Hill brought it. Obviously, you guys have probably seen the highlights. He was awesome. Tua was good. Barrios was good. Waddle still did his thing. Uh, a lot of explosive plays. The one thing that concerns me, and I had this concern last year, is we're big play dependent. Every play seems like it's either a first down or nothing or bad. There isn't enough of those five-yard plays. You know, four-yard dump off, three-yard run. It just everything seems first down or bust, which that's a tough way to play all season, and it caught up to us a little bit in some of the games last year. So, Interested to keep an eye on that. Like, it's good that you're getting chunk plays. There's plenty of people in the league this week that wish they could have got some chunk plays. So the fact we don't have that issue is good, but we seem kind of dependent on it. So the only thing in the future to look towards to see if we can get drives going. Anyway, so that was game of the day, game of the week, I would say. Um, or funnest game is how I would put it. You can argue if there's better game. Funnest game to watch. Uh, the roughest game to watch, I would have to say, was browns Bengals. Ugh. Just gross. Browns win 24-3, I believe. But uh, Browns defensive line dominant. I mean, Orlando Brown Jr. was getting whooped all day. Just bad day at the office for the Bengals. They were bad. No one was good. No one stood out. All bad. Um... Deshaun Watson still throwing balls in the dirt, man. It was raining there. Keep that in mind. The weather was poor. So he did a great job scrambling. That he seems to have back. The magical elusiveness. The But still the throw. He is off, man. At least four balls just like pounded into the dirt to an open receiver. It was... It's still concerning. I think by now he would have it back, but... Something to keep an eye on because, like I said, they won the game. They they dominated. He didn't look great, though. Again, like I said, he scrambled great, but throwing still an issue. So I would have thought, like I said, he'd have all the kinks worked out by now. So something to keep an eye on if Deshaun Watson has lost it or he's going to find it in terms of throwing. Uh, the one that shocked me the most, I don't know, this might surprise you that it shocked me, but uh, in the NFL preview show we did at the IRP. Go check them out. Um, I like the Seahawks possibly to come out of the NFC. Started off pretty well. They scored 13 points fairly quickly early on. And then did nothing the rest of the game. The Rams dominated them in the second half. Matthew Stafford looked healthy. I thought there's a lot of talk that he just has a chronic elbow problem that you're just going to have to deal with. 
He looked good. He made some throws. I would say outside of two, I think he was the best quarterback. That was the best quarterback. Before, that was the second best quarterback performance of the week. Um, he made some throws. Throwing to guys like Tutu Atwell and Pico Nakua. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, outside of Tariq Ruin for the Seahawks. Yeah. Complete letdown. Say, but I was impressed with the Rams. They're kind of in that weird spot of they still have some great vets. Cooper Cup still hurt, obviously, for those who don't know. Hamstring. And then they got these random low drafted runner, you know, guys who just hadn't played a lot. And they stepped up week one. So I'm uh, they're a curious team to watch. Assuming Matt Stafford is healthy and still got some throws in him, maybe they'll surprise us. But uh, Rams dominating Seahawks surprised me. Um, the most impressive loss. No one wants to lose week one. It sucks in, to lose week one, right? But I would say if you came out semi-encouraged, you would have to be a Patriots fan because outside of the first quarter that started like a freaking nightmare, they were down, seemed like 16 to nothing off the bat. And I ain't going to lie, got a pretty good chuckle out of it. After that, all Patriots. They got Bill O'Brien back as the offensive coordinator. After that, ran pretty well. They still just have a problem sometimes finishing the drives off. The, the hilarious thing is with Tom Brady, situational football, end of halves, end of games, always the best team, right? The last two years, they've been one of the worst teams, it feels like, at that. So... Whether it's not getting your feet down, whether it's just a sloppy play, guys in a wrong spot, whatever it is, it's just funny how that's shifted. But they should be encouraged, and they play the Dolphins on Sunday night football this week in New England because that defense still looks legit. We already knew it was legit. We didn't have much concern with that. But the offense moved the ball, man, on the Eagles. So you have to wonder, the last two times we've seen the Eagles – the defense has stunk. So outside of, by the way, Jalen Carter, looks like teams are, the hype was real, okay? I think he had like eight pressures in that game. I think he led the week. I mean, he he was, whew. Yeah, he looks like he may be a problem. So let's hope he's not a problem off the field. I guess that's why he dropped. Anyways, Patriots, if you were encouraged after a loss, that would be the number one team that was encouraged after a loss. Um, rookie quarterbacks. Anthony Richardson looks the part, man. He's got, like, the perfect body. Like, if you were to make one, that's kind of how you would make it. And he was more accurate than I thought when he showed at Florida through week one. He played the Jags, by the way. They lost. But they kept in it. Um, he made some good throws. He doesn't have a running game. You know, he has Michael Pittman Jr. and a bunch of guys. But he played well. I thought for sure, by far and away, the best rookie quarterback. Um, I'd say the second best performance from a rookie was C.J. Stroud. Texans kept it close with the Ravens for about two and a half quarters. And then just, you know. They just couldn't finish dry. They just it got kind of sloppy. But C.J. Stroud did not embarrass himself. And I thought the worst rookie performance was probably Bryce Young playing the Falcons. He didn't really do anything down the field. I think he completed one pass down the field, like over 10 yards. He was, he was not very good. I thought by far he was the worst rookie. So Richardson stood out. Stroud was – he didn't embarrass himself. He looked like he could play in this league. Bryce Young was a little rough. Made, still made a few plays, but that was a little rough. Um, considering, I would say he probably had the easiest matchup of the three. Not that the Falcons are bad or anything, but just... Yeah, he, he was the least impressive, I would say. Um, defenses. We already talked about the Browns dominating, but Cowboys 49ers. I also said in the preview show, I was like, the only thing if you were to worry about something for the Cowboys is the last two years they've led the league in turnovers. 
Typically, history says that is not something, even when you're a really good defense each year, that carries over year to year. Turnovers can sometimes just be a little luck, a little, you know, whatever. Ball bounces the correct way. When it bounces in the air, it happens to come, you know. There's obviously, you still force them, but sometimes you got to get lucky. Well, through week one, uh, that trend has seemed to continue. So, I don't know. And now next up, Dallas gets the Jets. So, it should be a great defensive performance. Has Zach Wilson improved? I'm not going to judge him on coming in when he didn't know he was going to play against the Bills. We'll see what he does with a week to prepare. But, uh, yeah, has Zach Wilson improved? If he has, Jets can still make the playoffs. If he hasn't, it's gonna be, they're going to be rough to watch, but that defense will keep him in it. Uh, the other dominating defensive performance, I thought these were probably my two worst takes so far. If you went off just week one, I was like, hey, the 49ers might dip a little bit in defense, right? Again, I still thought they were top ten. We're not talking falling off a cliff. Uh, but, no, they, they dominated the Steelers, who were the preseason darlings of the NFL. Kenny Pickett looked like trash. The offensive line looked like trash. They suffered major injuries in that game. Deontay Johnson seems like a pretty, not a torn hamstring, but it's a pretty serious hamstring injury. He'll miss a few weeks, which a guy who relies on quickness, he's going to have to wait till he's 100% to play, you know. Um, Cameron Hayward. Mr. Dependable, Mr. Reliable. He's out probably half the year now with a growing surgery. Uh, Friar Muth, I believe, came back in the game after a hit to the chest. So that looks like more just wind knocked out of you, maybe a bruise, but he should be all right. But that was pretty much a terrible week one for the Steelers. That's about as worse as it could get. Complete bloodbath. We were watching for a while a multi view. And it had Browns, Bengals, Steelers, 49ers. And my brother goes, we're going to have to find a different multi-view to watch. Because these two games, he, what did he say? He goes, it was like Andrew Dufresne against the sisters. <laughs> Shawshank Redemption reference. If you get it. I got a good kick out of that. Um, and last up that we'll talk about, least impressive victory. So this is one you come out with a victory and you should be psyched and you just go, Ugh. and that was Washington playing the Cardinals. Did not look good. Credit to them. They still got it together and won, I think it was 20 to 16, but playing a Josh Dobbs led Cardinals team, they trailed majority of the game. So... Like I said, they squeaked it out. Washington was one of my sleeper teams. Yes, they won the game, but if they play like that, they're just going to put you to sleep, okay? Um, yeah, I would say that was the least impressive victory of the week. So what stood out to you in week one? I didn't talk about every single game. Try to keep it a, you know, where somebody might actually watch this, you know, around the 20-minute mark. But uh, what stood out to you in week one? Give me a main thing that stood out to you. Player, teams. Because like I said, there were other games we could talk about. Raiders, Broncos was close. You know, all that stuff. But uh, the Lions getting a victory on opening night. But I'm not talking a bunch about the Aaron Rodgers injury because that's just on the TV 24-7. So you're not getting that here. So, <laughs> but uh I'm interested to see what you took away from week one. Please put it in the comments. I love hearing what you guys saw. All right. What was maybe the most or least impressive thing? Whatever. What stood out to you week one? Appreciate you watching. On to week two. Go Dolphins.